Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Let us welcome the Lord of the Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Two or three gathered in His name here, here in our midst. Your presence, oh dear God, O oh, Spirit of Christ, Makapodesh, is what we long for. Hallelujah. Thank you, men, put on the kalit as we observe Shabbat uh, today. Barukata, Yahova Elohim, Meleka Olam, Sheke Yanu, Veke Yemanu, Veke Yanu, Lasmana said, Blessed art thou, Yahovah our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and preserved us and enabled us to reach this time. So, week after week, Shabbat after Shabbat. And thank you, Lord, that you have commanded us, you have instructed us to sound the shofar. In the day of your gladness, in your appointed feast, you shall blow the shofar. Shabbat is a feast, as mentioned in Vayikra Leviticus 23. As a reminder of you before your God, I am the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Avino Shabbat Shumayim, Marukata Yehovah, Eloheinu Meleka Olam, Asher Kitsanu Bemitzvota. Uvdam Yeshua Mashiach, Betsevenu Leshmawa Kola Shofar. The sound of the shofar is likened to the voice of God. It is a call to assembly, a call to in gathering, a call to prayers, a call to repentance. It's a call to heart preparation. It's a call to worship, a call to praise, a call to battle, spiritual warfare, a call to ward off or panic the enemy. It's a call to invoke the presence of God, a call to herald the coming of our King, King Yeshua. Bo Yeshua, Bo, come Lord Yeshua, Lord, hallelujah, come. Vailek, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a rousing cry, with a call from one of the ruling angels, and with God shofar, and in Matthew 24, 31, he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. Let's be blessed by hearing the sound of the shofar. Hallelujah. Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, Yehovah will not hear. And also in 1 John 1, 6 to 9, if we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of his son, Yeshua, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us by his blood from all unrighteousness. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then you, O oh dear God, will hear from heaven, you will forgive our sins, and you will heal our land. Abba, Father, we come before you through your Son, Yeshua Mashiach, and by the Ruach HaKodesh. Lord, search deep our hearts. If there's any sin that separates us from you, Lord, wash us clean by the blood of your Son, Yeshua. As we repent, we ask for forgiveness, O oh dear God, and turn us, O oh Lord, from our wicked ways. Thank you, Abba, for sending your only begotten Son, Yeshua, who died on the cross to save us, to redeem us. And thank you, Spirit of Messiah, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, that you dwell in our hearts. Convict us, O dear God, of any sin, that we may stand righteous before you through the righteousness of your Son, Yeshua Mashiach, and enter boldly your throne room to obtain grace and mercy. 
Create in us a clean heart, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within us. Do not cast us away from thy presence. Do not take thy rock upon us, your Holy Spirit, from us. Thank you, Lord. Restore to us the joy of thy Yeshua and sustain us with a willing spirit. O Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And thank you, Lord, for your 13 attributes of your mercy. Yod Hei Vav Hei, Yod Hei Vav Hei, El Rakum, Ve Kanun, Erek Apayim, Ve Rav Eser, Ve Emet, Notzer Eser, La Alafim, Notzer Yavon, Ve Pesha, Ve Kata, Ve Nake. The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of fathers on the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. This is Yehovah in Shemot 34, 6, 7 proclaiming himself his attributes of mercy when the Lord passed by in front of Moshe and proclaimed Yodhei Bave, Yodhei Bave El Rakun Bekanun Erekapayim Verad Hesed Vehemet Notzerased Lalafim Notzeagon Vafesha Bekata Venake Lord have mercy upon us of your God this past season for the series of typhoons or low depression areas, O God, visiting our country. Spare us, O God, from more calamities, uh, disaster, destruction, O Lord God, death even. Lord, we dedicate ourselves unto you, O dear God. Set our people free. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Let's proclaim the Shema. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Vahavka et Adonai Eloheka, Bakol Lavavka, Uvkol Nashka, Uvkol Modeka. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Vahavka Lereyaka Kamoka, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Let these things that I have commanded you this day be upon your heart. This is Moshe speaking for and in behalf of Jehovah. Teach them thoroughly to your children and speak of them while you sit in your home, while you walk on the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. Bind them as a sign upon your arm and let them be a sign between your eyes. Write them upon the doorposts, the mezuzah of your house, and upon your gates. And it shall come about if you listen obediently to my mitzvot, my commandments, which I am commanding you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul, that he will give the rain for your land in its season, the early and late rain, that you may gather in your grain and your new wine and your oil. And he, Jehovah, will give grass in your fields for your cattle, and you shall eat and be satisfied. Verse 16, Deuteronomy 11, Beware, lest your hearts be deceived, and you turn away and serve other gods, small letter G, and worship them. For the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you, and he will shut up the heavens so that there will be no rain, and the ground will not yield its fruit, and you will perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you. You shall therefore impress these words of mine, Devarim on your heart and on your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. And you shall teach them to your sons, talking of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, so that your, your days and the days of your sons may be multiplied on the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them as long as the heavens remain above the earth. In Shemot 19, 3 to 6, Moshe went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, 
Here is what you are to say to the household of Yaakov, the Israelites, to tell the people of Israel, that includes us, the mixed multitude, the Goyim, believing in Yehovah, believing in Yeshua. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will pay careful attention to what I say and keep my covenant, then you will be my own treasure from among all the peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be a kingdom of Kohanim, of priests for me, a holy nation set apart. These are the words you are to speak to the people of Israel. Then Moshe called to all Israel and said to them, Listen, Israel, the Barim 5.1, to the Torah, the laws and rulings which I'm announcing in your hearing today, so that you will learn them and take care to obey them. Jehovah our God made a covenant with us at Oreb. Jehovah did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, with us who are all of us here alive today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for you are a covenant-keeping God. Let's now proclaim our covenant with God. Piyasarat Hadibirot, the ten words or ten commandments. Aleph. I am Jehovah, the Lord your God. Beth, you are to have no other gods, small letter G, before me. Gimel, you shall not misuse the name of Jehovah. Dalet, observe the day of Shabbat, which is today. Hey, honor your father and your mother. Bab, do not murder. Zayin, do not commit adultery. Heth, do not steal. Teth, do not give false evidence. And Yod, do not covet. This we proclaim, affirming our covenant with Jehovah, the Lord our God, making us part of the Israel of God. Galatians 6, 16, having been grafted in the good olive tree. Romans eleven seventeen. as his plan and purpose was to be a kingdom of Kohanim, of priests, a holy nation, Kadosh. For by grace we have been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God that formerly we, the Gentiles in the flesh, but now in Christ Yeshua, Messiah, have been brought near by his blood. For he himself is our Shalom, who made both groups Messianic Jew and born from above Goyim, Gentiles into one new man in Yeshua HaMashiach. Today is October 1, 2022, 6 Tishrei, 5783. Um, last Sunday was the Erev Ros uh, Hashana or Erev Yom Teruah. The biblical reference is in uh, Vayikra 23, the Feast of Trumpets. And 10 days later, um, by October 4, um, Eve, which is October 5, the Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. So, uh, for those who are able, we will be gathering around uh, uh, this place for that day of uh, uh, marking the Yom Kippur. It is a day of prayer and fasting. Uh, sundown. October 4 to sundown, October 5. Uh, no solid food. Water, you can take water. And um, instead, we will have a Bible fast. We will have the book in front of us uh, while going through the Yod Nidre and other prayers uh, for and on behalf of ourselves, as the high priest did, his family, and the congregation. So, Yeshua is our atonement. He is our kaparot, our Yom Kippur. And five days after is Sokot, or the Feast of uh, Tabernacles, uh, beginning with uh, October 10 uh, to 18. But since uh, the Jews are reckoned time, beginning with sundown, uh, the day before. So, Erev Sukkot is October 9th. 
uh, next next Sunday, not tomorrow, but uh, October 9, next next Sunday, we shall gather here as how we are mandated to have a holy convocation for the Feast of Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Ingathering of uh, the souls. So come over, um, those who are interested, uh, contact us. 0916-636-1473. Let me repeat that. 0916-636-1473. We're over here in Salcedo Village in Makati. Uh, you are welcome to observe uh, the Feast of Tabernacles and before that, Yom Kippur with us. So uh, these are the fall feasts from Pesach, Ahad Matzah, Bikurim, the spring feast, and then Shavuot, Pentecost, and their Talal of three or four months comes the fall feast. Yom Teruah, we have done with that. Yom Kippur, and Sokol. So, the, the Torah portion begins with Devarim 31. 1 to 13, Moshe's last council, and he takes leave. This is Shabbat Parasha reading number 52 by Yarak, and he went. The second portion is same chapter, verses 14 to 22. Moshe's end is near, and Israel will fall again, as uh, predicted. And the third portion is the Barim 31, 23 to 30, Yehoshua. Yehoshua is commissioned. The after reading is in Yeshayahu 55, 6 to 13. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And Isaiah 56, 1 to 8, the rewards for obedience to God. The Brit Natasha readings are number 5, Romans 12, 14 to 21, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And uh, MJ or Messianic view, Hebrews Chapter 13, 5 to 8, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And the last portion is Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, the full armor of God. There are other related readings like Hosea 14, 1 to 10, Micah 7, 18 to 20, and Joel 2, 15 to 27. Let's say the blessing before the reading of the Torah portion. Uh, please turn your Bibles to Devarim, or Deuteronomy 31, or verses 1 to 8. Before that, let's say the blessing. Abba, Father, Avino Shabbat Shemayim, our Father who art in heaven. Baruch Atah Yehovah Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitsanu Benitzvotam, Betsi Veinu Laatsok Gide Brei Torah. Blessed art thou, Yehovah, our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with thy commandments, and commanded us to engross ourselves in the study of the Torah, to focus ourselves in the study of His Word, His instructions, His precepts, His rules, rulings, statutes, ordinances. Why? For our own good. God's teachings from heaven, God's instructions on how we are to live our lives, the way he created us in his image and likeness, the way he wants us to. Please turn our Bibles to Devarim 31, verse 1 to 8, reading from the CJ Meet. Moshe went and spoke the following words to all Israel. I am 120 years old today. I can't get around any longer. Moreover, Adonai Elohim has said to me, you will not cross this Yarden, Jordan River. Adonai Elohim, your God, he will cross over ahead of you. Hallelujah. He will destroy these nations ahead of you and you will dispossess them. Yehoshua, he will cross over ahead of you as Adonai Elohim has said. 
Adonai Elohim will do to them what he did to Sikon and all the kings of the Ebori and to their land. He destroyed them. Adonai Elohim will defeat them ahead of you and you are to do to them just as I have ordered you to do. Be strong. Be bold. Don't be afraid or frightened of them. For Adonai Elohim, your God, your Hevave, is going with you. He will never fail you nor abandon you. Next, Moshe summoned Jehoshua and in the sight of all Israel said to him, Be strong, be bold, for you are going with these people into the land Adonai Elohim swore to their ancestors he would give them. You will be the one causing them to inherit it. But Adonai Elohim, it is he who will go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will never fail you nor abandon you. So don't be afraid or downhearted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say the blessing after the reading of the Torah portion. Avino Shabashamayim, our Father in heaven. Barukata Yehovah Eloheinu Meleka Olam. Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Vekaye Olam Nata Bitukenu Barukata Yehovah Noten HaTorah Blessed art thou, Yehovah our God, King of the universe, who gave to us the Torah of truth and planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, Yehovah, giver of the Torah, the living Torah, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. So, by elect, in Hebrew, the parasha text reads this way, by elect Moshe, by Daber, et Hadevarim, Ha'ele, El, Kol, Israel. Moshe went and spoke these things to all Israel. Word meaning, by elect, the, from the Hebrew, Chaldee Dictionary, Strong's Reference, H1980, means to walk, to go on, to continue, to behave, to come, to be conversant, to depart, to enter, to exercise, to grow, to lead, uh, to travel, to walk abroad, to and fro, to up and down, to places to wander, uh, to wait. So the first mention of this word, Bailek, as uh, how we have learned it before, earlier in Hebrew, the key word becomes the title of the portion. So. The first mention in the Old Testament is found in Bereshit, Genesis 2.6, from the King James Version. But a mist by elect went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. In verse 5, to put it in context, For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. So, there's a need for Torah teachers, once again. Bayelek. Vekata. Um, the first mention in the New Testament is found in Matityahu, Matthew 2, 9. And having heard the king, uh, Herod, Tetrarch, they, the Magi, the wise men, not three kings, <laughs> uh, went by elect their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east, Bailek went on before them until it came and stood over where the child Yeshua HaMashiach was. Moshe said, I am 20 years old today. So the insight I got was, could this be Moshe's birthday when he said this? Uh, and uh, he said that I can't go around any longer at 120 years I'm 72 sometimes my 
uh, joints in my legs are aching. Uh, the body, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And that uh, could be arthritis or gout or too much uric acid. So um, he said, Adonai Elohim uh, to, Yosh, to Yehoshua or Joshua, he will cross over ahead of you, as Adonai has said. In Bambidbar, Numbers 27, 15, 23, it mentions the account where Yehoshua uh, is to succeed Moshe. Verse 18, take Yehoshua, son of Nun, a man in whom the spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, is, and lay hands on him. Adonai Elohim, verse 5, will defeat them ahead of you, and you are to do to them just as I have ordered you to do. Has Satan has been defeated by Yeshua. Amen? So, we are to do likewise. Live victorious life, not defeated. Na parang uh, we are being hit by Satan for just small uh, matters, finances, emotions. Overcome this in Christ, in Yeshua. Finally, he says, be bold. Be strong. Don't be afraid or frightened. Number one, be strong. Strong in faith. Bold. Not cowardice. Be not afraid. Scared or be not frightened of them, of the enemy. So, Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm. The schemes of the devil you'll be able to stand firm versus the schemes of the devil. In uh, I remember in 1 John uh, first letter of UK, uh, he says I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you. Chapter 2, verse 12. For his name's sake, I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him, Yehovah, who has been from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young children, or young men, young adults, because you have overcome the evil one. Amen? He is defeated by Yeshua 2,000 years ago. <laughs> he is no longer uh, a lion roaring. <laughs> so, Kalbuna, I have written to you children because you know the Father. These are stages in our spiritual walk, in our journey. And Verse 14, I have written to you fathers because you know him who has been from the beginning. Amen. As we journey, we walk close to Yeshua, then it rubs on to us. We become, his character becomes our character, and we're able to overcome uh, problems, uh, uh, emotional problems, financial setbacks, and even health issues. Because Yeshua said that by his stripes, I'm healed, and that though he was rich, he became poor, that we might be rich. And knowing no sin, he became sin for us, that we may be righteous in his righteousness before God. So I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you. The word of God abides in you. So. Our, while we eat three, four, five times a day physical food, our spirit and soul needs feeding. And the word of God is the food for our soul and spirit. And you have overcome the evil one. The Son of God appeared for this purpose that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8. 
No one who is born of God practices sin because his seed, Yeshua's seed, abides in us. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. So, makakaalaman. The separation of the wheat and from the tares. Or the goat. <laughs> the sheep from the goat. You know? And malapit na. Because with his coming back soon, imminent coming, these things about to happen. So, Yeshua said, that greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. Amen? So, do not be discouraged, but rather be strong, be bold, don't be afraid or frightened of the enemy. For Adonai Elohim, your God, is going with you. Amen? You're not walking alone. But Yeshua, I remember a long time ago, I heard first pastor describe it. Why is Yeshua say As you walk together. So no matter what attacks from the enemy are, besides this provided us the full armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, helmet of salvation, the shoes for the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, he has provided us the sword of the spirit of the word of God. And what is that? The word of God. The word of God. The Rema word from the Ruach HaKodesh. The other day I was talking with a sister over the phone, a businesswoman who's also in the same building as I am. And as we were praying together, then a Rema word came from her saying, and she declared, Tomorrow, expect a call. <laughs> expect a call. I didn't know from whom, but true enough, the following day, my client, whom I've not been talking with for quite some time, a month or two months, called me up. And the following day, I went to see him in his office, and there were some concerns, and one thing led to another until I finally said, oh, there's an opportunity a piece of land is being offered in this and that place. And he said he's interested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is in control. And that grandma word came from my sister. The following, uh, yesterday I called up the sister and said, Nagkatotoo, <laughs> you sinabi mo. Because she said, because she heard from God that I will be receiving a call. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Be strong. Be bold. Don't be afraid or frightened. For Adonai Elohim, our God, is going with us. He will never fail you nor abandon you. Amen. You are going with his people into the land, Adonai Elohim swore to their ancestors, to Abraham, to Yaakov, to Yitzhak. And you know how big that land is? The borders are way beyond the present day Israel. Baga Metro Manila lang yung Israel. The region or the entire length and breadth of the promised land according to the Bible extends all the way to the Tigris River, to the west, to the Mediterranean Sea, uh, rather to the west, to the east, the Syrian mountains, Golan Heights, and to the south, the Wadi of Nile of Egypt. So it's ma much more than uh, the present territory. And I think uh, the Iranians um, somehow has, have an inkling about this. That's why they want to really <laughs> the Jews. Israel is really uh, bent on doing that. But God, if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? Now, next is, he would give them uh, Yeshua, uh, Yehoshua, 
you will be the one causing them, the younger generation, to inherit the land. My take on this is this is the role of a leader uh, that you will be the one causing them to inherit it, to inherit the promised land, to open uh, their understanding to what, this is not a mystery, it is written, it's exposed, it's just getting the right focus, observation, the interpretation, and the application of the word. The Bible is simple, it's not complicated, you know? Amen. And just like Rabbi Yeshua, the way he would teach in terms of uh, uh, examples, agricultural in context, but it was understood by the people. Hindi philosophy, not doctrinal or uh, uh, high polluting words, but it is down to earth, it is simple. So, that is the role of uh, us believers in Yeshua, as we lead others to Christ, that you are the one causing them to inherit the kingdom of God. Um, like the other week we shared, that my uh, co-broker came over, but instead of just returning the fee, she accepted the Lord, Yeshua Mashiach, Savior, and not only that, uh, was able to enter the Bayelet into the kingdom of God. And much more, um, many occasions. As the Spirit leads you, lead them to Christ, Yeshua. Because these are the, indeed the last days. It may be too late. And once a person dies, today is the day of salvation. Pag namatay na, they cannot make any more a decision to accept Yeshua as Lord and Savior. So Yeshua did not come to condemn, but to save. But for those who do not believe even in his name, you are already condemned, you are already headed for hell. So he will never leave you, nor forsake you. He will never fail you, nor abandon you, says CJP. So don't be afraid or downhearted. In 1 Corinthians 13, 8, the love chapter, God is love. In 1 Ukrainian 4, 16, love never fails. You know? Love is kind, love is gentle, love is patient, so on. Love does not uh, brag or is not arrogant. Uh, does not provoke, but it ends with love never fails. So God will never fail you. Believe me. Do not be afraid or downhearted. Seeing the multitudes in Matthew 9 26, Yeshua felt compassion for those, for them because they were distressed and downcast, like sheep without a shepherd. In verse 35, Yeshua was by elect. He was going about all the cities and teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. For sake, he will never leave you nor forsake you. In Matityahu 27:46, when Yeshua hung on the tree, he said, My El, my El, Lemana Shabachtani, why have you spared me? I'm reading from the Aramaic English New Testament. But the common English translation is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Has God really forsaken Yeshua? If that's the case, then we will be hopeless. The correct interpretation, therefore, is the Hebrew 
word is Lemana Shabbatani, not Asbatani, which is translated as lose it, relinquish, permit, release, set free, or forsake, or abandon. Shabbatani means far from being forsaken. What Yeshua literally meant here is, Father, I'm ready. Why can't we finish this? His sacrifice on the cross. Bakit pa natin patagalin? He willingly, di ba, the cup in the Garden of Gethsemane, pumunta iron. Not my will, but your will be done. While the apostles were <laughs> sleeping because drowsy because of the four cups of wine they drank, the Pesach said there, Yeshua prayed and he willingly offered himself as a sacrifice. So he went to the cross, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And as I've said before, ano yung kagalakan, ano yung joy na nakita ng Panginoon? Yung mga pagmumukan ng mga tao, kasamang tayo doon before we were born again. Na napakalungkot, downcast, downtrodden, in debt, um, desperate, Depressed, did 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 did. Yeshua saw our faces before, but he went to the cross because that's the only way by which we could be with him. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, praise God, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Yeshua, Hallelujah, for redeeming us, for saving us, for. Restoring us, just as if we have not sinned, and putting us back into the garden, the garden of Eden. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My El, my El, Lemana Shabbatani. So Yeshua did not mean forsake, but he meant that he was ready. What with the news in Matthew chapter 14? 1 to 12, that you Canaan, the immerser, was beheaded by Herod the Tetrarch while he was in the prison. And his Talmudim, his disciples, came and took away the body and buried it. And they went and reported to Yeshua. Was Yeshua discouraged? Not at all. In Luke 9 51, it came about when the days were approaching for his ascension that. He, Yeshua, resolutely set his face to go to Jerusalem, meaning the cross, the execution stake, the tree. He didn't shirk away in cowardice, but remained courageous to overcome the evil one. For being bruised, pierced through for our transgression, being crushed for our iniquities, the wrongful deeds committed with premeditation, the chastening for our well-being fell upon him and by his scourging we are healed. Hallelujah. Sister Beth, hallelujah. You are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You are healed by the stripes of Yeshua. As the only prescribed way by which the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief if he would render himself as a guilt offering. 
not for his own sin, because he made him who knew no sin to be sin in our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.20. The Bible in front of us, God's word from Abba Father, Yeshua and the Ruach HaKodesh guiding us, teaching us truth, learning how to inductively make the right precise observation, accurate interpretation, and correct application, finding Yeshua Mashiach in the reading. Yeshua then said to his Talmudim, to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore beseech the Lord of the harvest to send to Vayelek out workers into his harvest field. Why are the workers few? Because in context is workers with the same compassion as Yeshua who saw the multitude desperate, downtrodden, downcast. And the only hope we have is none other but in Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moshe, together with Adonai Elohim and all Israel, the people, includes the 12 tribes of Yaakov and the mixed multitude who were delivered as well by God out of Egypt and sojourned with the Israelites in the wilderness, obeying one Torah, one law for both the Jew and the Gentile, one standard, God's standard. What? Moshe bidding farewell, 120 years old as well. No longer ambulant, di na masyado nakakalakad, able to go around, and more so, Yodei Vave telling him, you will not cross the Jordan River, the Yarden. <coughs> that God will cross over ahead of them, the so-called Joshua generation. That God will destroy these nations, the seven nations, greater and stronger than Israel. The Canaanites, the Amorites, Gilgasites, Hittites, Hevites, Jebusites, Perisites, so-called termites. Not because Israel was righteous, but because of their abominations, their detestable things which they have done for their God, small letter G. So you, Israel, may not sin against the Lord your God. You shall not covenant with them and show no favor to them you shall not intermarry with them. You shall not give your daughters to their sons, nor shall you take their daughters from your sons. Do not be equally yoked with unbelievers, as uh, how it's worded in Corinthians. For they will turn your sons away from following your Dave from following me to serve other gods, small letter G. Then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you, and he will quickly destroy you. But thus you shall do to them. You shall tear down their altars and smash their sacred pillars, and you down their asherim, and burn their graven images with fire. Deborah 7 5. For you are a holy people set apart, sanctified for God's holy purpose. Holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you, amen, to be a people for his own possession out of all the people who are on the face of the earth. How can you beat that? It is God who has chosen you. You are special. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And when did Moshe make this statement? He was already 120 years old, minus 40 years in the wilderness, so 80 years old when they crossed the Red Sea. 
And in Acts 7.22, Moshe was educated in all the learning of the Egyptians. He was a man of power in word and deeds. Verse 23, but when he was approaching the age of 40, it entered his mind to visit his Hebrew or Israelite brethren, the sons of Israel, and in Hebrews 11.23, the writer wrote, by faith, Moshe, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the kings or the pharaoh's edict to kill, to put to death all Hebrew boys born. Exodus Shemot 1.16 By faith, Moshe, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter Verse 25, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Verse 26, considering the reproach, Messiah, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, Moshe left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, Pharaoh, for he endured a seeing him who is unseen. Still about Moshe, verse 27, by faith Moshe kept the Pesach and the sprinkling of the blood so that he who destroyed the firstborn might not touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as though they were passing through dry land and the Egyptians, when they attempted it, were drowned. Fayelek, hallelujah. Matthew 10, 5. These 12, Yeshua sent out after instructing them, saying, do not go in the way of the Goyim. The Gentiles do not enter any city of the Samaritan, but rather go by elect to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This was their priority. And as you go by elect, number one, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Number two, heal the sick. Three, raise the dead. The dead physical, physically and the dead spiritually. Four, cleanse the lepers. The unclean. Five, cast out demons. Freely you receive, freely give. In conclusion, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. But the 11 minus Judas, Yehuda. The eleven Talmudim decided, those disciples proceeded to Galilee to the mountain which Yeshua had designated. And when they saw Yeshua, the recent Messiah, they worshipped him, they adored him. But listen to this. Underline this in your Bible. But some were doubtful. The opposite of having faith in God is being doubtful. Are you doubtful? Lord, increase our faith or strengthen our faith. Not in faith, in faith itself, but faith in God. And so Yeshua came up and spoke to them. The Great Commission, our famous last word, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go by elect, therefore, and make Talmidim, make disciples of all the nations. That's why this group is called Talmudim of Rabbi Yeshua Mashiach. No other, not even a big names in the Christian world or in church charity. But we want to stick close to Rabbi Yeshua Mashiach and be his Talmudim, be his followers, be his students of his word. That's how he had instructed the disciples. Make 
shall be the make disciples of all the nations, immersing them, <coughs> baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Rock Hakodesh. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So, aside for pastors, what have we been teaching them? Forsaking Shabbat and doing Sunday. That only started 350 AD when Constantine, by decree, made that rule. But ever since, it has been very written, very written by the very finger of God in the stone tablets that it is Shabbat. That is just one example. What about the Moedim feasts? It is also a Torah, an instruction for us to observe the feast. Why? Because it is God's appointed times with men. He himself designated, set this in his calendar. God's calendar. So what do we have to do? Follow, obey. Yeshua observed the feast. The disciples did. Rab Shaul did. Why don't we? It's not just because we are Gentiles. No. Forget being Gentile. Be a disciple of Yeshua. Luke was not a Jew, the writer of the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, but he was a follower. He was a student of Yeshua, a Tal, one of the Talmudim. So teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. I received a text, a message from Sister Arlene. Somewhere in North Kaloakan, there's a group that wants us to teach the Torah. So the schedule has not yet been firm, set, but we are open. I said, yes, why not? Because Christians are hungry. We experienced that ourselves better than I. We've been Christians long. We're now 40 year old, 40 years old in, in, in our journey, in our walk since 1982, September. But there came a point in our time, 16 years ago, wherein we felt dried up in the spirit and asked ourselves, is this all to this? Is this all to it? It is, if you do not connect it to the Hebraic roots of our Christian faith. It has to be rooted in the Torah, principally the first five books, so that your understanding of everything in the New Testament, since there is nothing new in the New Testament, is grounded in the first five books, in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew scriptures. So why not study the source and get the right understanding, the right perspective? Yes, Yeshua said, I did not come to abolish the Torah, the prophets, the writings, but he came to give us full meaning, the right understanding, not according to the orthodox Pharisaic rabbis, but according to reading what is written, understanding the word of God, according seeing it to the eyes of Rabbi Yeshua, that our application will be correct. And knowing the truth, applying it in our lives, will set you free. What is truth? Pilate asked. And on the cross, the sign read, you visited the garden tomb and they pointed out to you Golgotha. That's where the sign was, on the tree. Written in Latin, Hebrew, Greek. Jesus notri, Iesu notri rex iodorum. In English, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. 
In Greek, I have not memorized it. <laughs> it sounds Greek to me. But in Hebrew, it says, Yeshua, Yod, Hanotsri, of Nasri, Vav, Hamelech, Yehudim, Yod, He, Vav, He. Hallelujah. And the Pharisees said to Pilate, to remove that sign or put on top of it, he said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, Yeshua, Hanotsri, Vav, Hamelek, Yehudi. Are you still in doubt? Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Romans 10, 8. But what does the word say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth Yeshua's Lord Adonai and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Promise that. For with the heart man believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Another promise. For the Hebrew scriptures, the Tanakh says, Whoever believes in him, in Yeshua HaMashiach, will not be disappointed. Yeshayahu, Isaiah 20 and 16. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, Yehudim, Goyim. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call upon him. For whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Let's call on the name of Yeshua and pray. Let's bow down our heads and say this simple prayer of acceptance. Address it to the Father as Yeshua was asked by his disciple. Lord, teach us how to pray. And he said, pray this way. Address it to the Father. Abba Father. Our Father in heaven. I acknowledge I am a sinner. Please repeat this after me. Make this your own prayer. This is not the memorized prayer. A simple prayer of acknowledging one's present state, sinful state. Please forgive me. I repent, O oh Lord, and please turn me around from my wicked ways. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Abba, for giving your, your son, your only begotten son, Yeshua, to die on the cross. And in your blood, by your blood, Yeshua, I am washed clean. Lord, you stand at the door, as mentioned in Revelation 2, and you knock at the door of my heart. And it's only I who can open the door. And whoever opens the door and accepts Yeshua, he will die and suffer. Thank you, Lord. Your spirit of Messiah, the spirit of Christ in us. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. In Yeshua's name I pray. Abba Father, we thank you for those who said this short prayer of acceptance. Touch their hearts, O oh dear God. If they need healing by your stripes, O oh God. Your word says, past tense, they are healed, we are healed. And Lord, thank you. You knew no sin. 
but you took our sin, that you may present us holy, blameless, in the righteousness of your Son, Yeshua Mashiach. And if the need is for financial, material needs, so that Yeshua, although you're rich, you became poor, that we might be rich. And thank you, Lord, in Devarim, you have provided us the ability, the wisdom to gain wealth. That you may establish your covenant with us. Thank you, Lord. What do you require of us? Oh, Israel, what does the Lord require of you? But to fear God, to walk in his ways, to love you, dear God, with all of our heart, with all of our soul, to follow you, Yeshua, to keep your commandments, to guard us, O oh Lord God, to obey them, your mitzvot, your commandments, your instructions, your statutes, for our good. Thank you, Lord. Bless us with the blessing of this day, Shabbat. In Yeshua's name we pray. Ivarekeka Adonai Vayish Mareka Yaer Adonai Panav Eleka Vikuneka Yisa Adonai Panav Eleka Vayashem Leka Shalom Vashem Sar HaShalom Yeshua Mashiach The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you, upon us, our families, our loved ones. My wife Beth, Daughter Camille, Daughter Jeff, your mom, your parents, your brothers and sisters, Sabu, Brother Sean, your parents and your brothers and sisters also in Sabu, Sister Carla, your mom, your sisters, your brother, Sister Winnie, and your friend, and Sister Lorna. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your presence in this place. Hallelujah. Minister to us, O oh dear God, in the quietness of our hearts. Touch us, O oh God. More of you. We want more of you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us. What can we share, O oh God? More of you that we may be able to give freely to others. Hallelujah. We pray for our President, Marcus Jr., Vice President, in Thy Salon. Zimmerman, Duterte Carpe, all the government officials, military officers, church leaders, as you have instructed us, so that we may continue living peaceful, quiet lives. We include the other world leaders of that, President Putin, President Xi Jinping of China, President Biden, the Lord God, the King Charles, and all the other leaders in Europe, as well in Asia, Africa, North and South America, oh God. We lift them up unto you so that we may continue living tranquil, quiet lives in all godliness and integrity. Advancing your kingdom, preaching the message of the kingdom, that the kingdom of God is at hand, healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, casting out demons in the power, in the authority of your Wakakodes, and in the name of your Son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving. Oh, okay.